Hello, Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. My name is Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry, and we'll be your hosts. Uh, this is our first session here, and we're not entirely sure where it's going to go, honestly. Um, the plan is that uh, that we have some principles that we support in terms of what makes good government, and that we want to review current events and so forth in light of those ideas. Okay. So... As far as our principles are concerned, we have personal liberty, free enterprise, and self-government as as things that we kind of decided were kind of the pillars of... of Our ideology, I suppose. Yeah. 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 Um, so, Larry, what does uh, personal liberty mean to you? Don't worry, I'm going to switch it up plenty. <laughs> They'll have no idea what your name really is. <laughs> yeah, all good. Um, personal liberty just... just the ability to, I don't know, I'm on the spot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I caught you off guard. Yeah, uh, as, well, as usual. <laughs> it's, you know, to me it's just the ability to make your own choices about your life. Yeah. Um, as long as you're not interfering with other people making choices about their lives. And, you know, there's some nuance there, obviously. But generally speaking, as long as you're not bringing harm to others, um, that that you should be able to choose for yourself what you plan to do. Um, Absolutely. And, uh, I, I, you know, now's as good a time as any. Um, the there was a movie, it was a made for TV movie back in the day. They've been showing it recently. The whole of like three and a half hours of it or whatever on Nuts. Stars or Encore or something. I can't remember. Anyway, um, it was uh, the Alamo, Thirteen Days to Glory. Now, me and my yeah. brother had a real interest in the, the whole Tex-Mex War. Um, don't know why, just one of those things, you know, that you, you found that some interest in. Your and, fancy. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, anyway, the the basic background is that the um, Mexicans wanted people to settle in the the Texas territory, which uh, was owned by Mexico at the time. Um, this is in the 19th century, uh, 1820s, 1830s, I guess, is when all this started. Like, um, so they were inviting uh, Americans in to settle in in the Texas territory and um, and somewhere along the way uh, they had some new leadership and they decided that they wanted the Americans out of Texas that Texas was to be for Mexico so they'd given them this land and then they were trying to take it back and you know, more government interference for you and uh, well the the people said no this is ours and and stayed and of course you know one of the the um, most well-remembered points of that was the Alamo, the whole remember the Alamo thing. And uh, so they made the movie, and the the story goes, um, essentially, that there were, you know, between 160 and 200 uh, people defending what was just a mission, just like a little church out there that they, you know, connected walls and, and so forth and set Four up as five. a... Yeah, as a defensive point. And they were attacked by um, Santa Ana's army, which was, you know, somewhere between two and 3,000 Mexican soldiers. And uh, there was a 13-day siege, the 13 days to glory, um, at, at the end of which the Mexican army overran the Alamo and killed everybody there, yeah. or at least all the defenders. They sent women yeah. and children away, but um, or we wouldn't have much of a story. <laughs> yeah, the stories came from somewhere. Right? <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, the, the mythology of it goes that um, the... Uh, the army man in charge of the fort was um, Colonel William B. Travis. He's actually from Alabama. Really? Um, yes. He uh, now, as as I recall, he fled Alabama because there was some um, issue about him uh, courting his cousin and so on. But anyway, <laughs> that's a bunch of yeah. I don't know. Yeah. What to say about that. <laughs> it was a long time ago, you know. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, that's Alabama, so <laughs> right. Yeah, we're gonna pretend that that stuff doesn't still happen. Right. Um, but anyway, uh, he was in charge of the fort, and this is, of course, where Davy Crockett and Jim Bowie died also, supposedly. But the, the mythology is that on the 11th day um, that uh, Colonel Travis, when it was clear that they they weren't going anywhere, that they were all going to be slaughtered there, the yeah. uh, Mexican army had uh, had played the no-quarter um, sign, some, some kind of like a trumpet symbol that thing lets that, them yeah. know that yeah yeah, yeah. if you if you stand and fight we're going to kill you all yeah, yeah and um so uh in a in a very 
libertarian way, I would say. Uh, the story is that, that Colonel Travis gathered everybody up um, while the, the fighting was low. and Because they were just being bombarded at the time. Constantly, you know. yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, a, a slow moment without all the, the cannonballs going off everywhere. And um, gathered everybody in the, in the center of the fort and uh, gave them a choice. Like, drew a literal line in the sand and said, those of you that want to stay and defend this fort come cross this line and stand with me and those who want to go you can go you know cover of darkness try and slip between the lines whatever so um the and you know as the story goes all but one man a frenchman of course um (laughs) decided to stay and defend the fort and uh and this one frenchman is where the story comes from don't know if any of this is true but um the the speech that he gave um and this was played by alec baldwin in the movie uh Mm -hmm. colonel travis was Mm -hmm. um the speech that he gave in this particular movie i thought was was particularly poignant to me and it certainly had an impact on my outlook on government and it feeds into the personal liberty idea um and uh in the movie he says um it's not about land or money it's about the one thing that no man should ever be able to take from another man the freedom to make his own choices about his life where he'll live, how he'll live, how he'll raise his family. We face a man who would take these God-given rights away from us. Well, not from me, he's not. And then he gave the option to everybody, and, and yeah. you know everybody crossed the line. Yeah. That, that these I- ideals of personal liberty, of being able to make your own choice about your life, that these, I- that these rights come from God, and that people were, like, facing their own death were, were willing to defend them still. Amazing. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess that's personal liberty in a bit more than a nutshell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Story was maybe too much. Well, we nah. might have to cut some of that out. <laughs> yeah. But, but um, you know, and then our our next principle, and the truth is that I, I think that all of these things kind of, um, they're all necessary together. They, you can't do any of this. One, one plays off the other. Right. Um, you talk about uh, you know political, personal, and economic freedom. They're they're all intertwined. Um, if you lose one, you'll you'll lose them all. You're you're doomed to lose the lose the rest. Right. Yeah. So you know we we talk about personal freedom in the in the first principle, and in our second principle is free enterprise. It's the economic freedom. Yeah. Um, and you know free enterprise. We just mean that um, that people should be able to to create and distribute. And come to agreements about what they'll trade in, in money or goods for for whatever. And, and ideally, you'd be able to do this without a lot of government interference. Yeah. I mean, ideally, as, you'd be able to do it without any government. Well, interference. ideally, without any. But I mean, we're 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 so far removed from that at this point. It's just even with the government shutdown, mm-hmm. that we're still miles miles from where we need to be mm-hmm. as far as that's concerned. So, but um, it, there's certainly a belief, and and you know we'll hopefully dispel the idea that it's some kind of religion of the free market through the yeah. course of this podcast. But um, you know there is a belief that the the market provides what's necessary and Absolutely. at the right cost. Yeah. Um, that you know it it the market does work for everybody because everybody works for the market. <laughs> everybody everybody that's taking part in the market is determining the the direction of the market and in prices and all those things mm-hmm. so. yeah absolutely um and you know i i actually was talking to some people a couple of nights ago that that have bought in to this idea that capitalism represents uh you know greed and and <laughs> so forth and you know well, hopefully I, I was and i would take the milton friedman approach on that which what system doesn't no i mean do you think that there's no greed in China? Mm-hmm. I mean, take a look. I mean, <laughs> well, they've opened up their markets. So. Well, they have opened up their <laughs> markets now. And but. yeah, and I actually, one of those guys actually said to me, um, you know, something about that uh, that capitalism hasn't done a lot of good for many people. Yeah. I said, what are you talking about? You have literally like a billion people have been raised Lifted out of poverty, from poverty in, poverty, in yeah. the last you know twenty to thirty years with the opening of the uh, or liberalization of the Indian and Chinese markets. Yeah. Um, so I would say that, you know, 
that's 15% of the population of the planet that 15% of the population of this well planet is well done. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that we wouldn't be in the, and I hate to use the word privilege, but I, I mean, I feel like he's looking at this from a very privileged position, having born and been born into a country that did have a yeah. mostly free market for the first century plus of its existence. Yeah. Um, that we're still, you know, we're still riding that wave. Yeah. And we are. We're we're absolutely riding the wave, and I'm afraid it's getting ready to like crash on top of us due to our own pulling away from some of that. Yeah, and I think that they're just focusing on the wrong aspects of of what a free market does or what capitalism does. Yeah. Uh, I mean, certainly capitalism um, rewards greed to some extent, but yeah. uh, that's not really what it's rewarding. Um, I it's mean, rewarding greed success. is the yeah, greed is the is the incentive. Yeah. Um, but the it, it, what it's rewarding is the people that were able to accurately predict what other people were going to want. Absolutely. And if you can predict what other people are going to want, then that's then how you're you... you're going to have a good go at it. Yeah. Here. Exactly. That's how you make it in a, in a capitalist free market. Absolutely. Um, so I think that they're focusing on the wrong things. They're focusing on what people are able to accumulate, but not on what people are able to to get as a result. Yeah. Um, not, it's not just the people that are making all the money that created the product and took all the risk, not to mention. but Oh, yeah. yeah. You, that's always left out, too. Yeah. Um, but it's all the people that that make use of whatever it is that they're offering yeah. that have benefited. Absolutely. So, um, so anyway, as, as uh, Gary said at the beginning, ideally, yeah. you know, no government interference, let the market do its thing. And it may not always work as fast as we'd like, but it tends yeah. to work itself out. It does. For the most part, and of course, that all plays back into self-government. Yeah, um, that's the political freedom aspect. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and you know, the idea there being that uh, the uh, I, I know that one of your favorite phrases is the government. The government's best governs least. Yes. But um, you know, I, I think that it's. I, I would add an addendum to that. I guess right. is what I would say. Is is uh, the government that governs best governs least and governs at home. Yeah. That's true. That we have a very upside down view of our political system now, well, and and, and it was, it's upside down from what it was created to be. That's what I was fixing to say. It wasn't mm-hmm. designed to be top down. It was designed to be bottom up. Mm-hmm. You know, your local government was supposed to have the most power, and your federal government should be the government that has the least amount of of say so in your life. Right. So, it was quite intentionally designed to limit the federal government to to very few very few um abilities yeah like, i mean I they're s- just they weren't really supposed to be able to do a whole lot mm-hmm. I, I mean yeah. it, it, even as far as like foreign policy goes like i mean they they were supposed to that was really their realm mm-hmm. and it, they were very tied down in that aspect as well right yeah it was mostly to to be a figurehead to bargain on behalf of the states yeah um but the the states got the final say still Exactly. And, and, of course, all of this began to change through, well, well, actually right from the beginning. I mean... Yeah. I mean, it was it was contentious from the go. Yeah. The know. people that wrote the document that tried to restrain the federal government almost immediately began to move outside of what, what was permitted. Yeah. Um, I mean, George Washington was, like, <laughs> the first president to... Uh, to overstep his constitutional bounds. Yeah. Um, and, you know, since he was the first president, you just can't get yeah, any you, earlier than that. You really that. can't go, well, yeah, and you, you, it's hard to go back on that. And that's how we've ended up where we have, mm-hmm. where every president has pushed the envelope a little further. Yeah. And it ha- it's continuing today. Oh, absolutely. I, I would say exponentially. Yeah. <laughs> like every, every president pushes it further than the last. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, just the presidents in my lifetime have, have pushed so far. Have I, I'm actually, and this worries me a little bit, but um, I, I have come to believe, really, that, that people want a king. Yeah. And, and that's what people well, have been trying to make out of the presidency. I would, I would argue that individuals do not, mm-hmm. but the public does. Yeah. It's kind of the group think mm-hmm. idea where like a, a big group of people will come for, with far different conclusions than an individual. Yeah. And yeah, cause you'll find few individuals that will admit that they want a king. Well, but, yeah, we, sure. but we head that direction. 
like un- uncontrollably. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so the the point being that your local governments should have the most control because your Absolutely. local governments have the most interest in what goes on locally. And they're and they're most in tune with what's going on in your area. Right. I mean, you can't have city folk telling farming <laughs> communities what to do because they just don't know. Yeah, that sounded so southern for just a moment. They can't have, can't be having them city folk those those damn carpet baggers coming in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, um, truth is truth. Yeah. No, and it's absolutely true. I mean, even our even our local representative isn't invested locally. Yeah. I, I if you and I think that this is true of most um from for most uh, legislative districts, uh, you know, federal districts, that your your representative to the federal government spends at least as much time in D.C. as he does locally, yeah. and that he's not actually that well connected with what's going on here. Now yeah. he certainly will will fend for money. I like, you know, we know well, that ours is always fighting for more stuff to be built here by the yeah. by the federal government because it provides jobs and you know it. it you know, presents a lot of money for the community, but well, and that's kind how much of, of the money was taken out of the community to just send it right back here, and how many bureaucrats got their little piece off the top before it came back. Well, and that's kind of when you really look at it. That's pretty well all our representatives do now is mm-hmm. they they go to D.C. to try to fight for money that we sent there to mm-hmm. bring it back. Right. You know, when it could have been left here to begin with, mm-hmm. and well, and that's why we have to go back to the constitutional framework yeah. um, because otherwise the only incentive is to try and get as much of it back and it's actually yeah. good for us to try and get as much of it back too yeah um, well yeah I mean you know. I, I'd like to see and I, I talked to uh, our friend that ran for state house about this yeah. um, what I would like to see is that is for each level of government to protect you from the level above yeah from the larger level I, I would yeah. like to see our city government protect us from the county government our county government protect us from the state government, and our state government protect us from the federal government. Yeah. And one of the things that I talked about with him, because a lot of this comes down to money. It does. Um, you know, the there is a, a certain amount of control that they're very easily able to to um, press upon you, just just through taking your taxes in the first place. Yeah. Right. Um, and uh, what I what I suggested to him, and I, I don't know how feasible this would be. It, I'm. I can't yeah. imagine the legislative hurdles that would have to be jumped to, to make this happen. Yeah. Um, but uh, what I suggested to him is for the state to collect the federal taxes of the people in Al- in Alabama. Yeah. Um, so have the state collect our federal taxes and, and the pay state it. pay the federal government our federal taxes. Yeah. Um, and that protects each individual from the IRS. Now, yeah. you know, they can come back to the state and say, we think that you shorted us however many millions of dollars in, in income tax money or what have you, but they couldn't come after you or me. Or, yeah. yeah. It's an interesting concept. Yeah. Be... I mean, I would like, I would love to see that done. Yeah. Um, and, and it goes a long way towards, uh, if the state government was collecting the federal taxes and the state government was the one sending those federal taxes to the federal government, yeah. um, then it, it also gives them some control back. Yeah. That, oh. You know, that they're Absolutely. holding on to this money. Yeah, um, Absolutely. And, and maybe if the federal government wasn't working for the state the way the state wanted it to, they would just hang on to maybe that money we, a little longer. Yeah, maybe we'll just keep our little portion of... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so... Anyway, those ones. kinds of things, I, I think, yeah. you know, and beyond the president's just assuming more and more power, we also had our legislative branch giving power away. Just, just giving it, yeah, no, and that's because at the end of the day, these all these guys all have elections they have to to win, and it's a lot more difficult for them to win those elections when they make decisions. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that's yeah. what it boils <laughs> down to, you know. Mm-hmm. It, so. It's easier to be on the fence and and es- essentially in your rhetoric appease both sides than to be on record taking a, a the taking a the stance. stance. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, now there's there's certainly truth in that. Um, and then we also had some adjustments to uh, the Constitution. The I don't remember is it twelfth or seventeenth amendment. That changed um, how senators were selected. I believe it's the seventeenth. Yeah. yeah, I think you're right too. Yeah. Um, where at 
one time. And I, you know, I don't know that people are taught this so much. And I know that a lot of people don't I, I realize this. I'm fairly certain I wasn't in school. If so, I don't remember. Yeah. Because maybe it's not relevant now because that's not how the Constitution because works anymore. Right? <laughs> it's really not. Uh, but um, the... The idea originally was that the House of Representatives was a representative of the people. And, yeah. of course, the the districts were much smaller in terms of population at that time. Now each mm-hmm. House member represents an obscene number of people, yeah. um, which means that they're not very representative at all, I of think, anybody, in the end. Yeah. It's so diluted. Yeah. But uh, anyway, initially, um, the House of Representatives was elected by the people in a in a popular vote by the people. Um, to represent their particular districts, and they were supposed to be the representatives of the people to the federal government, of all the people of the United States to the federal government. Um, And the senators were selected by the state governments in whatever way they saw fit. Um, So the senators were actually representatives of the states to the federal government, which is why you have two senators and uh, and a random, not random, but a a A specific number, a a proportionate number of representatives yeah. um and of course there's a lot of people complaining about that now you know that it's yeah. not fair that the that we each state no matter how big they are only has two senators yeah. um but you know that was a compromise was, yeah. uh, and it they weren't supposed to be representatives of the people they were supposed to be representatives of the states themselves yeah. and it's important to kind of note why so there's that was important for a reason, like because it from the sounds of that you're like, well, if we get to vote for those senators, don't they represent us, and that that give the people more of a voice? So kind of maybe go into why that's important that the states pick those. Yeah, it's important because the states are supposed to be sovereign. Yeah, the 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 states are the states, just like any state of the European Union. Yeah. Um, if you think of the United States as being like the European Union, that was the intent. Yeah. Um, is that uh, that you know Georgia was yeah. the equivalent of France yeah. um, or England that yeah. you know Virginia and Georgia represented individual so, states so you individual can almost think of these state each state as kind of being its own like almost country it is yeah. I mean it was supposed to be. it was that's how it was originally set yeah. up to be yeah. and the the federal government was just a representative of the group they they saw um, value in um, like a union, then, yeah, you know, as in yeah. that they would um, negotiate together uh, yeah. against the rest of the world, yeah. Um, and you know, so it was important that the states themselves, that the state governments, had their say at the federal level, yeah. because the the federal government wasn't a representative of the people. This is also why you have the electoral college for the president. Yeah. The president was never supposed to be a representative of the people. He was yeah. supposed to be a representative of the states as a collective. Exactly. Exactly. And so that's why it was important that the, the states selected their own representatives to the federal to government the federal in government. the Senate. Absolutely. So. Um, but that's that's long gone. Yeah, and the other thing we lost at the <laughs> other thing we lost at the same time was uh, immediate recall. Yeah. Um, and Which that's something that a group in Alabama here is fighting really hard to try to get back. Right oh, now. I would love to. Yeah. I, I would love yeah. to have immediate recall. Although I think in Alabama, what they would do is they would recall Doug Jones just because he's a Democrat. <laughs> and now that um, now that our boy that was the uh, uh, attorney general is available again. Oh, yeah. yeah. They'd love <laughs> to just reinstate him. Yeah, right? yeah. I, and the it's thing frightening. about him is, well, I mean, he wasn't the worst senator. He was a senator, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he wasn't the worst senator, but he's just such a bad attorney general like, yeah as far as all the people that could have been chosen for that position as attorney general not that i loved him as a senator but he wasn't the worst i mean he, there's i i dis, i disagree with him vehemently on a many many a issue yeah uh, so don't don't take me wrong yeah <laughs> I'll just say it. no I, I i didn't vote for him as the senator well, no, but yeah I, um, I, I never voted for him no. i'm not <laughs> don't yeah like i say I bet there but people but I was very was much about, happy so. with him being a senator than I was at him being a attorney general. Like yeah. he had a lot more levers of power to to I don't know. Like who are control. we talking about? Sessions. <laughs> yeah, I think this is some people oh, might not. Oh, be oh well, yeah, I, I forget that people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Don't know. yeah. Um. Yeah. So Jeff Sessions and and. Yeah. Uh, full disclosure here: we started recording these a year and a half ago. Yeah. More than 
A year, no, probably about a year and a half ago. Um, and then life got in the way, and we never published any of the previous recordings. But we were, uh, we were recording when um, at the end of the election. Yeah. Uh, when he was nominated to be. Yeah, and the and our and we talked about him before because we knew that he was going to be part of the Trump administration, and yeah. we knew Jeff Sessions was going to be a part of the Trump administration just because of his involvement with Trump throughout. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, he was the first senator to back Trump. Right. Yeah. And um, and we were saying beforehand that uh, you know, we I don't I can't remember what positions we said that we would have been okay with him in. We but came out with a couple. I don't remember. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, we both said at the time that like the worst possible thing could be attorney general though. <laughs> yeah. And like oh uh, you know anything but attorney general would probably be He's you know anything. acceptable. Yeah. And uh and then yeah attorney general. Of course general. that's where he ended up. Yeah. <laughs> well, and he was terrible at it. So. Yeah. You know, I guess we so. proved to be right, but there's no record of it. I mean, I still have those recordings, actually, but, you know. Anybody wants maybe, to challenge our credentials. Maybe someday, well, how would anybody know that it was for real? I guess there's embedded timestamps, but um, anyway, may, you know, maybe someday there will be a, a group of bonus episodes that were episodes before there were episodes. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, but anyway, coming back to the point, we our... Our principles being principles of personal liberty, free enterprise, and self-government, or um, individual liberty, economic liberty, and political liberty. Absolutely. Um, so, in in lieu of anything really interesting to talk about, um, we may as well address the, the current government shutdown. Ah, yes. Um, do you have anything you want to say to, to intro that? Well, just to kind of give people a point of reference where we're at. We're at day 31. At this recording. Yes, uh, January 21, 2019. That's yeah, that's the date. Yeah. So, yeah. and It may take me a couple of days to get this up because this is my first time. I'll have to figure it out. We'll have to, we'll have to figure some things <laughs> out. But, but yeah, so it's, it's been 31 days, and I'm just saying if you have to Google to see if the government's still shut down, maybe the government isn't having that big of an impact on your life being shut down. Yeah. I'm just saying. Well, the whole thing's absurd anyway. Uh, you know, the, the impetus to all of this is the border wall and this fight over immigration. Yeah. And I, I think I think both sides are being silly, and this is such a bizarre issue to be intransigent about. Um, so... You can't really say you're surprised though, because this is no. this is something that Trump ran on. I mean, this is I mean, it, this from the time he came down the elevator, like this is what he was talking about. Yeah, so. with the uh, the um, selectively edited quote about uh, Mexicans being rapists and what have you. <laughs> yes, yeah. um, so that, that's true. I mean, I I understand his need to get this done. Yeah. Um, this was a huge reason why he was elected, was. and uh, it, it's it makes more sense for him to be intransigent, intransigent excuse me, than than the left. Yeah. Um. So, but he's wrong too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well. And it's weird talking about both sides of this. Now, I'm certainly more on his side than theirs. I, like I believe yeah. in in national in defense borders. Yeah. and borders. Um. Yeah. You know we. Both uh, both Gary and I um, work with the libertarian our local libertarian party, yeah. um, and I I understand that the the national party is all on board with open borders, no borders, no boundaries, etc. Yeah. Uh, we do not subscribe to that. I can't I can't get down with that. Um, I, I, I think that that's wonderful as an ideal. Uh, well, but there's there's some there's I would support that if. At the same time that we done that, mm -hmm. we completely done away with the entitlements and like just started tearing the. If we're tearing the government down left mm -hmm. and right, yeah, let's open yeah. up the borders. I'm good with it. Yeah, but we're not there. Yeah, like we're so far from there, it's it's ridiculous, and Absolutely. nobody's even really talking about going there. Yeah, so it's not like Trump's like or anybody or even the Democrats, the ones that support the open borders, mm -hmm. are like, well, yeah, we're gonna start shutting all these government programs down, and then we're gonna mm -hmm. open up the border. Yeah, I can support that. Yeah. Well, yeah, and that's back to Milton Friedman again, where you can have open borders or a welfare state, but not you can't both. You can have both. Yep. Right. Um, well, I, I think that, I don't think that, certainly a wall will have some impact. Well, um, yeah. But the people that we're really trying to keep out, I don't think it's going to stop. Like, yeah. if you're worried about organized crime, drug traffic, et cetera, now, of course, like, when it comes down to it, we don't, we're opposed to the drug war, too. But Exactly. Um, but... 
assuming even that that's a problem if you're yeah. if you're concerned about uh about lawbreakers the wall's not going to have a lot of impact it's just um, particularly on the drug trade because there's enough money on the other end of that that they're going to find a way around over through it's below whatever yeah. um so i i don't think that what you're trying to limit uh like the real important things that you're trying to limit in terms of border crossings are going to be uh impacted in any great degree by a wall yeah um and as you're so fond of reminding me over and over again that walls can be used to keep people in as well as keep people out yes they can and you know 5.7 billion dollars i think i think it's just kind of a waste of money um i think that there's better ways to defend the border and i i do agree that it's it's a waste of money but let's not get caught up in that it's a lot of money no no because as far as the federal government like we're like what 20 what 17 trillion dollars in debt no we're like 22 i think is it 22 I, maybe it's broke 20. it's definitely I'm over not. 20 is it over 20 definitely well, over 20 i'm pretty sure it was more than 17 when trump took office at any rate mm-hmm. it's it's an insane amount of money mm-hmm. and and five and yeah five billion is a drop in the hat right and that's why i have a problem with the left on this is because that, that is when you hear them on the news that is their main argument is mm-hmm. is to try to try to is the hypocrisy of the conservatives to you know this is a lot of money you know yeah. it's really not in the grand scheme of things no it, we're, you're talking about one tenth of one percent essentially the federal a little bit more than that but yeah. one tenth of one percent of the of federal budget like one one thousandth of <laughs> yeah. the federal budget um that the democrats are worried about us spending when they're more than happy to drop 10 times that amount on a number of things the and frivolous if, things yeah if they're gonna be intransigent about some kind of spending i wish it would be on something that that was of greater value to me yeah. um i wish that they would stand up and say yeah, we're not going to approve this uh, $60 billion of uh, increased military budget. Yeah. Or right. something like that. Like, you know, do, <coughs> do something that'll save us a much larger amount of money and have a greater impact and on our lives. And have a bigger lives. impact. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, I agree. I think it's. I think both sides are are just wasting time, that there's no real value to the argument on either side and that it's just, it's just political maneuvering. It is. Um, and, uh, you know, and it really irritates me. And back to your point about if you have to Google to see if the government's running or not, then maybe you don't need it so badly. Um, I, I think that there's been, this is, this is the bright side. This is the yeah. silver lining to all of this, this rhetoric and this ridiculous mess that's going on. Um, is that, well, now we're a month into a, a government shutdown that everybody knows about, right. and that there there are people that are impacted, but very few. And yeah. for the most part, I would say the people that have actually been impacted by this are the people that worked for the federal government that are on furlough right now. Yeah. I mean, that's really, I mean, even when you watch the news, that's always where the victims are, mm-hmm. is 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 the, the 800 and something thousand people that work for the yeah, that, that just think life. about that. By the way, yeah. eight hundred thousand people are have are not working because of a partial government partial. shutdown. Well, and it goes back to what got, what private company would have eight hundred thousand non essential employees? Yeah, like every time they say non essential, it makes me laugh. Yeah, like <laughs> why do we have them? Like, yeah, I'm just saying because we're paying for them. They aren't. Oh yeah, yeah. All of these people are funded by tax money. Well, um, funded by debt. I mean, well, yeah. you can't even really I mean, well, call it's, it tax it's, money anymore. It's coming around one way or another. Yeah. Um, that money's going to get... Technically, I guess it's they're funded cost, by China. Yeah, it's co- It's going to cost us one way or another. Well, it, it is um, going to cost us. They, There's they no question about that. They print it and we lose all our value through inflation. Yeah. They borrow it and just kick it down the road for the next generation. Or, uh, you know, or they default, I guess. That could happen too but yeah um you know it's it's print borrow or well and that's that's the fear i have is the the easiest way to wipe out the debt is through inflation mm-hmm. and so with the the government that has control over the fed and whatnot in inflating the currency and you see that would help come on gary the fed is an independent organization uh-huh yeah, yeah i bet it is yeah. <laughs> so 
Yeah, that's that's always the worry though is that they're just going to inflate the currency to bring the debt down, mm-hmm. and and that and that hurts savers. That hurts anybody that has saved money and yeah. done what they are supposed to do. Yeah, you you reward the people that have made the good decisions and yep. Or no, you, sorry, no, you backwards. penalize you penalize, <laughs> penalize the, the good decisions, reward the bad decisions, Absolutely. which is what government does. Yeah. Um. The, you know, the other bit of this is that I, I keep hoping that those, you know, hundreds of thousands of people that have been working for the government that are on furlough and aren't being paid, um, that they'll, you know, they'll see the light and do something productive, uh, you know, with their lives. That would be the Um, hope. And uh, I just keep thinking of the... And just um, find a way to transfer their skills to the private sector. I mean... Where they'd be more valuable anyway. Exactly. Well, this is one of the problems is that there's a lot of people that don't have a lot of skill. (laughs) Well... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> working in the public sector, I know it sounds this, terrible, doesn't it? But um, you God, know, it's true. Though. There's a there's a because you make less money in the public sector. You now do. you get better benefits in a lot of cases, but yeah. if you're really good at your job, you can always do better in the private sector. Yeah. And so the the government sector tends, I think, and you know, my a bunch of people in my family were government employees and were very good at what they did. I mean, they yeah. did something that they were passionate about. But law enforcement is something that hasn't really been controlled by the private sector yeah and, the and US, i think but, even as libertarians we can kind of concede law enforcement to the government yeah. i mean I, there's <laughs> we it would be bottom of the list to be let go yeah leave i mean we can agree on that all right yeah no i don't know <laughs> I, i'd have to think about that yeah um you know i i, I think uh you know bureaucracy and administration are the last things to for the government to let go because that's so. all that they do really well. Yeah. Um, actually, they don't really do well at administration, but they're really good at bureaucracy. <laughs> yeah, that's. Um, yeah. So, for sure. I, you know, I, I would like to to see you know more of that move to the private sector. Certainly, like more of these employees move to the private sector. But yeah. I, I don't think that a lot of the people that are non essential personnel working for the government right. have a great deal of skill to offer to the private sector. This is um, very true. And uh, so, you know, I, I don't know. But I, I would like to see them do something more productive with their lives than yeah. than this. Because uh, what we have to remember is that all of these people that that are being paid by the government are being paid by us. And because there's nothing that the government can give away that it doesn't first take from somebody else. Exactly. Um, that it... The government, at its heart, what it does is, in order to save somebody labor, they have to require more labor from someone, from else. someone else. They produce yeah. nothing on their own. And I, I've been I, thinking about this today. I was reminded by the uh, um, reminded about the Bastiat quote, which I'm not going to get exactly right, but I'll get close enough. That he, there was a a point um, where he defined government as that great fiction uh, through which. Everyone seeks to live at the expense of everyone else. Exactly. And so I, I have little sympathy for these government employees that aren't getting their paycheck. and Because yeah. I think, you know, that's the price they pay for living at the expense of everybody else. Yeah. And, you know, this is the danger and, and this, is the, this is the comeuppance. I don't know. I don't think I have anything else to say about that. Do you, is yeah. there something else I mean, that, that you want to address? Well, that will pretty well... Addresses all of my concerns, I think, or kind of what I what I think mm-hmm. as far as this shutdown, and that's, I mean, that's as far as like news coverage and stuff. Um, at least the U.S. is concerned that the government shutdown is pretty well the big big topic. Yeah. Um, and yeah. we'll hit a lot more of this in the future because I, um, if you go to our website, uh, thelibertymike dot com, um, you'll see a few articles that I've managed to put up over the last little while. Uh, most of which are about foreign policy. Yeah. And so uh, I will make the point, you know, before we close today, that while the government is shut down, they're still managing to be involved in um, other countries' politics. Um, and <laughs> Absolutely. Which you, you know... Didn't you mention something about Venezuela earlier? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, we're definitely endorsing the idea that uh, Maduro's um, new term is illegitimate. Um, yeah. As far as I know, uh, without evidence... That's a popular <laughs> phrase now in government. They uh, said without evidence that his um, term is illegitimate. So we're yeah. we're still involved there, and you know I I think uh, we we jumped on board with uh, Jair Bolsonaro, the new president of Brazil. Oh. Um, but and if 
you know, Bolsonaro, he's, Brazil is a, is a neighbor of Venezuela. So if they want to comment on the government of Venezuela, they're more than welcome to. I don't know what we have to do with any of it. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know. They got a lot of oil. So, yes. You know. They actually have the largest oil reserves in the world. Exactly. The so largest oil reserves. It's reserve not an world. accident yeah. that this has become a vocal or fo- focus point of our government. Yeah. Like. We'll, we'll see what happens going forward. But um, speaking of our website, thelibertymike.com, you will find an article there uh, with me predicting that um, we would be invading Venezuela at some point in the future. Yeah. Um, and and the whole disputing the presidency mm-hmm. just kind of lays the groundwork for that. Exactly. So yes, he may need to be removed forcibly at some point. Yeah, exactly. And who better? <laughs> yeah, we're we're so good at that. <laughs> yeah. This is what we do very well. Yes. So, well, about ready to close us out, I guess. I I guess so. Um, again, uh, check us out on our website, thelibertymike.com. Um, this is where uh, we will be posting these podcasts in the future. Um, we'll try to do this twice a month. Is that the plan? Like every two yeah. weeks is kind of the idea? We'll start out that way. I mean, try to kind of start it off slow. But I I think we should start off twice a month and at some point decide to hit, hit weekly. Yeah. yeah. Um, once we get into the swing of it and get, yeah. start making some habits. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, we'd certainly hope you like this. Any comments um, or anything, you can uh, send them to me. My um, email address is michael at thelibertymike.com. Uh, I don't know how long I will be saying that email address. I guess it depends on what kind of response we get. Yeah. Um, I may just have to set up some kind of And also other thing in the future. follow us on Facebook. That's, that's the platform that we really kind of have a, a presence on. Right, yeah, because um, um, uh, uh, Liberty Larry is responsible for that. Because I don't yeah, do Facebook. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> if you want to want to hit us on Facebook, that's the, or hit us on social media, that's the place to go. Because I don't do Twitter. So yeah, I might have to do that sometime in the future. Well, well, again, we'll see. I mean, certainly a social media presence is important. Yeah. So Facebook is is where we are right now. Uh, also at the Liberty Mike, isn't that how it goes? Yes. I got a cat trying to get There's in. There's a they, scratching they, at the door. Yeah, they've they've had enough of this. I think they're ready for us to pack it in. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, again, hope you've enjoyed this. Um, certainly let us know if you're listening because we'd like to know. And let us know what you think. Um, any kinds of uh, criticism we'll be happy to take right now because we don't expect a whole lot of you. Um, <laughs> yeah. And we're definitely <laughs> still figuring this out. So. Yeah. <laughs> so let us know what you liked. Let us know what you didn't like. And um, we'll try and get better at this in the future. Well, um, thanks again for joining us. Uh, We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Um, Again, I am uh, Michael, and I'm with Liberty Larry, and we are going to say goodnight. So, uh, ciao. Later.